we updated the course management page. In addition to taking attendance and tracking how many hours a learner has attended, you will now be able to tell us who received a hotspot by clicking on the yes or no radio button. So launching your first class, right? So you did great. You applied for your course. You figured out who your learners were. You um, ordered the devices. You got everyone their internet and their hotspots, whatever they needed. You got them enrolled, hopefully, by the first day of class, right? With that form. So they're technically in the Techos home-like thing. Um, your first day of class, two things. Obviously, if you're teaching virtually, teach them how to use Zoom on the iPad, you know, get them comfortable. And please make sure you have them enrolled, right? So again, if you haven't gotten them enrolled, try to get that done the first day of class. It's totally fine to use class time for it. Um, this is a thing, you know, like it's just to say, like you should have a fun interactive environment. This is very stale, me just talking to you. Um, so we hope that your course is more entertaining and more fun and engaging than our orientation. Um, but here are some, um, you know, things with kids that like to do dance breaks and stuff, right? Like, okay, everybody stand up. Let's take a five minute dance break or something, put some music on. But, um, you know, try to be as interactive as you can. Um, May actually did a, well, it wasn't Peers towards Kid, but May, May did a series of webinars on how to like make, uh, or at least one webinar on how to make your course interactive and different kinds of activities you can do on Zoom with like Jamboard and, and you know, other breakout rooms and stuff like that. So we have um, webinar like that, that you can watch. Okay, then you're going to manage your course. Here's a video, but what you're gonna get is okay remember when you had your students enroll right into your course you're going to get the email that says this is where you check your attendance it's like a course management it's not really that fancy it's just an attendance page here's what it looks like so you're going to get to this this again it's one link per class per course so if you have multiple courses you're going to have multiple links right so this is for this course tgh hub you know, a course that QJ, that's my supervisor and I are teaching. This one happens to be a school course and then the start date. This is just a random example. So don't use mine. You're gonna use your yours for your course, right? What'll happen is it'll tell you in progress is what you should always see. That's for us, your course is either in progress or it's canceled or it's closed. So you should always see in progress here. The course type you would see early childhood and then the course schedule that we currently have on file for you. So if this is not accurate, just please email us with the correct dates. And then you're gonna have the names of the adults and the children who registered. So if you see no names here, that means nobody's registered, nobody's enrolled yet, right? The way you know that the enrollment happened is they show up here. If they don't show up here, they either didn't do it or something glitched, right? So they should be here. It's in alphabetical order by first name, which is a little bit annoying. But um, that's how it is. It's not paired, unfortunately. But what you'll see is the kid's name will just have a name, like first name, last name, and nothing else. The adult name will have the adult's name, and then it'll tell you this adult goes with this kid. So you can have the pairs. So Jane um, is the adult with Robert. So if I go down to the R section, Here's Robert, which is the kid. So you should have both of them on there. Um, that's the clearest I can get it for you right now, sorry. Um, we don't have volunteers right now, but if we used to have volunteers in classes, but um, if, this is if you get a volunteer from us, it'll say that and you track their attendance too, but we're not doing that right now. Um, okay, so what you do is you put in their attendance. The information you're gonna have is, did they say, yes, you can use my picture, right? So here, you know, oh, I can send a picture of you to Tackles Home, that's fine. If they put no, you can remind them, hey, you said you didn't want your picture taken, so please turn your camera off for this picture and we'll take another one with you to, that we won't send to them. Did they receive a Tackles Home device in the last two years? Um, and then the last thing is how many hours have they completed? This is how many hours have they completed total to date, right? So if I'm teaching a course for two hours, the first day I have a class, you get two hours and you get two hours. Everybody gets two hours, right? So I give everyone two hours. I go to the bottom and I press submit. And then the next time takes a minute. Everything takes a minute. Our database is not the fastest. It's Salesforce. Okay, boom. Okay, that's saved. Now you know attendance is saved. You can go on. Now, the next time I have a class, it's another two hours, right? 
So what I'm going to do is, um, well, Eric gets another two hours. So now it, David's at, four, uh, Eric's at four hours total and Jane is at four hours total. Okay. Does that make sense? So the total amount they've completed to date and you fill everybody in and you press submit. So that's what you're always doing. When you're done, it should say 15 hours. The, I know the kid is not doing 15 hours, but if the adult completes 15 hours, just put the kid down for 15 hours. Uh, just, you know, they completed, right? We just were waiving those hours for the kid. So when you're totally done, everybody should say 15 hours, right? Or more, if you did a little bit more, that's fine. Um, at the bottom of this form are links. And all of these links are tied to your course. So let's say that you're like, oh, I don't see Maria. She's not enrolled, right? Well, so you don't have to go through your email. Here's the enrollment form, boom, for this course. You send that to Maria, she can get signed up. So if anybody's missing, here's that link again. Um, the survey at the end, here's the link. I'm gonna walk you through that in a minute. If you need to get a Comcast, here's the link for the code. If you have to add sessions, you can add sessions, right? Like if your course gets delayed or something, you cannot delete sections. I have to do that. So you can just email us if you have a big schedule change, but otherwise you can just add like a makeup session, something like that. If you're gonna add a course assistant, there's the form. Um, we're, we no longer have stipends. So this is gonna disappear um, in a minute. We're just doing the last couple of rounds from last year. Um, here's the iPad order form. And then we are also gonna ask you to fill out, uh, like you fill out some feedback for us. So all the links you need are right here. And then again, if you need anything, you're gonna email program at Tech Goes Home. Okay, it's good. So when you get these, this link, you probably wanna bookmark it. That's everything for your class that you need to report to us. Um, I have a question. Yeah. If I, have, if I do have an assistant, if I do have an assistant, um, they won't get an iPad, right? Like they need to provide their own device. Yeah, only we only give devices to the instructors. Thank you. Um, okay, so any, if you have to cancel your class, you know, it happens, that's fine. Just let us know anything, any other questions you have about your courses, your devices, please email us at program at Tackles Home. Please don't email me, please don't email May, please don't email Natalie at our individual emails email program at Tech Goes Home. Here's why. Um, sometimes I'm not at work. <laughs> sometimes Natalie's on vacation for a week, right? So if you email us individually, you're not gonna get a fast response necessarily, right? And if you're, and we have like, you'll see we have autoresponders, we're hiring right now, we're a little bit backed up. So if you email all three of us, you're like just clogging up all three of our emails, right? If you email program, somebody checks that email every day. Right. And again, we, we might not get an answer that same day. We try to like see, oh, you know, the device stuff, we'll try to answer first. But if Natalie's out, May will check it or I will check it. You know what I mean? Like somebody will check it. So um, it is really the fastest way to get help. It, that email address is only for instructors. So it, it's really your the only email you should, the only email address you should be emailing is program at Tech Goes Home. Okay. For now, like, you know, May is going to be like, hey, you're all set, blah, blah, blah. But once you have a course approved or course questions after that, that is the email for you. And I promise you it's the fastest way to get an answer from us. Okay, um, I'm maybe gonna skip this part. Um, do you all know how to use the find? Um, I don't wanna make assumptions. Does everybody here know how to use the find um, feature in Google Docs? I'll show you how to do it really quickly. Um, so let's say I have a question, right? Again, we went over a lot of information. I don't expect you to remember it all. Um, on a PC, it's Control F. I'm on a Mac, it's Command F. When I click that, um, and I think the Chromebook is also Control F, I find this thing that comes up here to find something, right? So if I'm like, oh, I don't remember what Nessie said about returning devices. So you might want to look returns, right? So um, it's going to highlight all the places where it says returned, right? This is just, oh, it's on page 39. Okay. Um, the next one says, uh, you know, also page 39, but I can just keep doing this. It's going to walk me through there and boom, it's going to take me somewhere. Internet and learners who don't complete their course are asked to return the device. Okay. Tell me how to return the device. I just keep doing this. Number five. Here we go, number six. So this will help me find like a keyword so you can just sort of skim through it. 
So it's, uh, again, it's control F on a PC or a Chromebook or command F. This is how I use this because I think it's the fact, for me, it's the fastest way to find the thing I'm looking for, right? So here's all the information on returning devices, right? I'm gonna, you know, somebody doesn't complete, blah, blah, blah. You go here, you fill out this form, you return the device, you know, things like that. So again, there's more detail here than all the stuff we're going through. So if you ever have a question, really the first place you should go is here. Because if you do this, you probably will find the question, the answer to your question within five minutes. And that's a lot faster than emailing us and waiting for us to respond. So my recommendation is always go to the instructor handbook first. If you spend 10 minutes and you can't find the answer, just email us, you know, um, and that's fine as well. So I'm gonna skip this activity because I just wanna catch up. Okay, so ending your course. Um, we are going to send you an email when it's close to your end date. That's also why it's important for us to have your schedule. We'll say, hey, it's getting cl close to the end of your course, right? Don't forget to do these things, right? So a little bit of a reminder. So um, make sure you're updating your attendance, right? So we want to make sure that we have 15 hours, you know, just make sure that your, your attendance is up to date. Um, that's the most important thing for us because, again, we have grants and stuff and we need to say this went to a person who finished their hours right um that learner post survey which i'm going to show you um and just make sure everything's good and the instructor feedback right so there's basically these things again we don't have the invoices anymore but we want to make sure you do those three things the final project um, is not required for ec you're welcome to do one um but you don't need to um yeah let us know if anything has changed so that email will have this. So here's the learner post survey, right? So we want them, you should have them take this by the last day of class. You can have them take it together. You know, you can do it together. So everybody can be like, okay, let's go to this link. Let's do, you know, let's fill it out together. You can answer questions. That way, you know, it's all done because it's really hard to track people down and have them fill this out when they're done with the course, right? So it's a lot easier, like when you have them. So you can do it the last day or the day before the last day, just make sure you get it. So again, the whole name thing, right? Name and birthday. So remember that the name is the one that's in your um, enrollment form, right? If I enrolled as Nessie Ruiz on your attendance form, it's gonna say Nessie Ruiz. So you can be like, oh, do you know what name you used? I have you, I have you registered as Nessie Ruiz. So use that. And then again, the date of birth, that's also the adult. And remember, it's gotta be in the right format. By now they should have an email address. Um, and then the child's information, again, just try to get that correct. And then they're going to fill out this survey. So again, it's just a lot of questions about what they thought about the course. What do they think about our policies? Like, you know, is 15 hours too much? Is, do you want more hours? Do you want less hours? Do you think you're going to, you know, this is going to help you? Like, what's the best part of the program? We will ask them to rate the, the trainers. So if there's two of you, it's one rating for both of you. Um, and to rate their overall experience with Tech Goes Home. And then they can give us uh, feedback, you know, stuff like that. So it's, it's mostly to help us um, and a little bit of feedback, you know, on, on stuff. This is probably not a, a one for the EC program or it might have everything on it. Okay, there's an extra section here for the EC program. So yours will be tailored to your course. Um, and they submit it. That is what we need. That's the data that we need from them. Um, so that's their last piece that they owe us. Um, we don't send this data to you automatically because we have to pull it manually. But if you want it, you just email us and say, hey, can I get the survey information for my course? Um, I have few people who email me after every course and they want it right away. And then I have people who email me every three months. I have one person who emails me literally every January. Can I get the data for my last last year? That's totally fine, too. So we'll just pull it. We'll take the names off and we'll send you all the other answers. Um, and, and totally fine. So it's good for you to see feedback. Um, okay, so that's the learner survey. And then the last thing you're gonna do is fill out an instructor survey, right? So you're gonna do this after every course. Um, so tell us which course you run, how many courses you've ran. This can be anonymous or you can put your name and it's the same thing, like you're giving us feedback. I will tell you, we do read these. Um, sometimes we'll sit and do a whole like read everything through, but they all come to my inbox they all go to my supervisor's inbox. Um, and so we like, I always at least like skim to see, you know, oh, there's a lot of writing there, <laughs> you know, and I'll read it. So we, we do look at them. Um, so 
this is your opportunity to give us feedback. Again, you're the ones running the courses. You know what's working. You know what's not working. If we're giving you a requirement that's really hard and you're like, this is ridiculous, please tell us, right? If you're like, please give me more resources on this. I need, you know, like, it'd be great if you guys provided blah, blah, blah for support. We do read this is that, um, you know, like the iPad comes with the case. That was a recommendation from an instructor. Hey, my parents are afraid to like let the kid touch the iPad because it's going to fall, right? Oh, that makes sense. Let's include some cases, right? Um, same thing with the Chromebooks. We added uh, a mouse, right? Because a lot of the seniors were having trouble with the trackpad. We added a bag. Some people wouldn't be afraid. During the pandemic, somebody was like, can we get headsets? And I was like, that's probably very helpful when you're on Zoom, right? So just like that, we, we, we do actually want your feedback. So I do appreciate it when you take time to fill this out. Um, we do read it. It doesn't go into a black hole. You don't have to put your name. Um, if you do put your name and you're saying something, I might want to ask you about it. So just keep that in mind. But it's, you can give us very bad grades. It's not tied to anything. <laughs> we, you know, we won't know who sent it but you're gonna fill that out after every course. If you're running a lot of courses, I know it'll get shorter and shorter, that's fine. Um, send us any pictures, um, anything fun you wanna send us, final projects, that example I showed you um, from the Carmen's course where the kids drew all the, you know, they read the book um, about, I think Don Quixote or something, and then they did the drawings. If you got stuff like that, we love to see it. Um, so please send that. Now, the thing I have here is a, kind of like a flow chart <laughs> because I know there's a lot of options like when do you need it you know it's a little bit it's flexible and it's sometimes hard to it's almost too many options sometimes so um this pdf um and I'm adding this to the handbook um can help you so I'm just running through the first couple of things you know your school your organization sets up a an, um a partnership with Tackles Home you guys are all here because that's already done you get certified right here's right here if you're going to have a course assistant you're gonna get them certified, right? Or like their application, their quarry. The next step you're gonna do is your course application, right? And then you're gonna wait for official approval, right? So once you get like, hey, yes, we can, we have two courses approved for you. That's 10 for the 10 iPads for this course and 10 for that, then you can go, right? Get your learners enrolled, all of that. So then to help you remember like what order to do things in, if you're teaching virtually, most likely you're going to need to order the hotspots and the devices early, right? So first thing you're going to do is sign them up for Comcast and order the, oh, this says Chromebook, sorry, the iPads, <laughs> right? And the hotspots, get them enrolled, boom, 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 here, the rest of the steps. So these are all the steps we've talked through today. If you're teaching in person, you don't have a computer lab, you need our iPads, then you're going to follow that same order, right? But if you're teaching in person, like Larissa was saying, she wants to use her own iPads, right? So she doesn't need that right away. Then this is like the order you can do things in, right? So it's all the same steps we went over during the orientation, but I think a little more like step one, step two, you know? So some people like a visual.